Smithy Industries. Okay, I want to welcome you all back to the Smithy Workshop. Today we're going to tackle an age-old problem of threading. Now threading can be as difficult or as simple as you want to make it. Today we're going to show you a simple method. So let's get started. Now what we're going to do today, we're going to cut a 1 half 13 thread. Now if you were making parts for the space shuttle, you'd get into the machinist handbook and it would give you the uh, major diameter, the minor diameter, uh, you could have a thread micrometer, all this stuff. Let's just do this a simple way today because this is not for the space shuttle. I've got an example of a 1 half 13 right here. So what I've done is I've taken and I've measured the outside diameter, which is 0 0.490, and I've come in here on my piece that I'm going to thread, and I've turned that to the same diameter. That's going to be our starting point for the threading. Okay. Let's take a quick look at the setup on the machine here. Since we're going to do a SAE thread, not a metric thread, okay, we've got a little lever inside the pulley box here. I've got it open. If you look in here, you'll see you can pull the lever outward. That's a setup for metric. SAE threads, let's push it in. Helps to give the chuck a little spin to get it all the way in the gear. Now we're in gear in here for our, our standard threads. Since we're going to do a 1013, here's 13 threads per inch right here. And that tells us that we want to be in position 7 right here and position one on this. That's going to give us our proper coordination for these threads. Okay, let's get our cutter set up now. We've got the compound tool post mounted on the table here. Now, we want the cutter on this thread, when we feed it in, to feed parallel with this edge of the cutter right here. In other words, on our thread, we're only going to cut on one side of the thread each time we cut in a little deeper gives you a much smoother thread. So what we've done is we've set this at 29 and a half degrees. If you can see right here on the side where that's at 29 and a half. Okay. Now let's bring our cutter over. You've got to get your cutter square to the workpiece here. So let's see where we're at with this. Now if I use my little threading gauge here, I can put that right against the workpiece bring my cutter up, and if I've got the right angle between the cutter and the workpiece, you see how that fits in there perfect? So this is a very important part of your setup to get that cutter at the exact right angle going into there. Also, you want to make sure that your cutter is on center line. If you remember from earlier videos, you can take a little flat ruler, put it in here like this, Look at it from the end, and if the ruler is straight up and down, you're right on center line, exactly where you want to be. Let's take a brief look at how we're going to engage our cutter for this. I've got the, the cutter moved away from the workpiece, but I want you to see what we're going to use to actually engage to start the cut. If you look down here, you'll see the threading dial, and the threading dial is rotating with the feed screw here. So, we're going to engage on number one. I always use the same number, that way I don't get confused. So I've got the half nut, I'm waiting for number one to come around, and oopsie, I missed. I was a little past it. That's why I always have my cutter back away from the end a little bit in case I miss. I've got time to pull it up and start again. Okay, so let's wait for number one to come around. You might want to practice this. To be able to engage right on that number can be a little tricky. Here's one coming up. There it is, right there. See that? Okay. Now you notice when that half nut's down, the thread dial stops turning. It's supposed to. Okay? But it lets you see that you've engaged exactly on that number that you want. Now let's go ahead and get our cutter depths and everything set up up here and we'll make our thread. <laughs> 